you'll get thrift store prices and frankly you get to see everything in the house and not just the stuff the thrift store let get to the floor. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Hey everybody, it's George the Antique Nomad, and I am just outside of Kansas City in Blue Springs. I am at the first of a couple of estate sales I'm hoping to get to today. It's Saturday, so a lot of these have already been open a day or two. This is half off day for a lot of people, and Kansas City has good estate sales, uh, but they oftentimes don't run on Sunday, so this might be the cleanup day, but I have a pretty full van, and I really just need little fun things that are inexpensive, so half off day is a perfect time for me to be hitting these. Okay, this one opened about an hour ago, so I know I missed out on some of this stuff, but I'll bet there's something fun in here for us. Little cane bench there for $12.50 is a good enough deal. Aluminum sugar canister. This looks like mostly newer stuff, but I see something over there that looks like at least an attempt at Sasha Brostov. So let's take a look here. This looks rather like Sasha Brostov's surf ballet pattern, but I think that this is another company that did it. His would have been signed, and I don't think these are his shapes. Nice little Irish coffee sized mug. That's a little different. Nineteen sixty seven. Well, I guess we know when that's from. Let's see in here. Cute little fan vase. This piece, I think, is pretty new. Oh, the little cocktail set there. That's pretty reasonable. We're going to take a look at that. Be seven dollars and fifty cents today. Too much gold missing though. It's unfortunate. Alcohol will actually take the gold off. So you have to be really careful when you're using these. Let's see what's left in dolls. <laughs> Baby Secret. Her hair has had a little bit of a chop. In fact, a lot of these look like they've seen better days. We do have a Raggedy Ann and Andy. And some older raggedies, but they're pretty stained on the faces. Wish we had some little kittles in here, but I'm sure those have been scarfed up already. You need a doll peewees. The you need a peewees are very similar in age to the little kittles and they definitely were trying to be like little kittles these are only a dollar a piece they they can sell anywhere from four or five dollars to about 15 and it really seems to depend which one it is but for a dollar each i think i might take a chance on these i think we'll get the girl with the crazy hair and the boy question mark no i guess that's a girl hard to tell with a late 60s shag <laughs> i see a celluloid dresser set and a guy taking pictures Nothing here I need to have necessarily. A little bit left in the bathroom, but just sort of the things you would expect. It looks like this is pretty scraped in here. We do have an afghan for $10. Gosh, that one actually feels nice. It doesn't feel like horrible cheap yarn, so that might be something. Then there's a quilt here. This one was 60 It's now 30 The question is going to be, what era is this? I like the quilting. Generally speaking, I mean, it's machined, but it's an interesting paisley quilting over this design. And for $30, I would buy a decent quilt if it's got at least a little age. So let's take a look at the fabric. Now there's a little silver lame there. That is a bit of a concern. 
these patterns with these hieroglyphics make me think 70s, 80s, as well as the overall color scheme. But I'll bet it's going to be a good design. Yeah, it's going to be a big starburst. It's $30. It's got a ruffled edge. I mean, I don't think it's incredibly old. And unfortunately, the edging is starting to wear, and that's a problem. Well, unfortunately, I guess I'm probably going to leave this one. Well, this was a good start. I am going to take in my $20 bill and get $1 back, and I got a nice little bag of fun things that were cheap. All right, let's see here. More glass. The Cheval Mirror is sold. Big Underwood typewriter. This one looks a little messed up. Boxes. Extra stuff. And don't forget, that's right out of the 70s. little Lucite. The Tiki mug here. This is Japanese, I think, but it's only going to be 50 cents. And for that price, I definitely will get that. Don't forget to look up. There's a whole lot of stuff hanging up in the rafters here. I don't see anything old that I need, but it's a good place to look. A lot of people don't think to look up at estates. People hang things all over the place and hide things all over the place. Cute little clothespin holder. These do sell, but this one's practically falling apart. $7.50 is not bad on this old galvanized gas can because it's got the cap and the handle and it's all complete. So for $19, I got a True Viewer, I got a Snoopy Walker, I got a Perpetual Calendar with advertising, I got, oh my gosh, I just got a bunch of stuff. I'm actually very pleased, even though none of it was really super significant. I mean, I got one pin that was a Zell pin from the Second World War, or just after in the original box, and that was $6, and I'll sell that for enough money to pay for all of this. All right, I am here at the second estate sale. This one looks interesting because I get the feeling it's sort of an old hoarder house. It looks small, and yet the pictures showed it quite jammed full of stuff. So we're going to go see what is left. Well, someone got themselves a big cabinet. Here's one of these silky deer. These are sort of an extension of the Belgian tapestries, but I think these are 1950s when you get into these multicolored. The one with the kittens is cute, but it's a little threadbare around the edges, unfortunately. Otherwise, that might be viable. Let's see what this one is. This one is later. And this one... Now, that one... A little more interesting. Oh, yes, I get the feeling there's just boxes and boxes of stuff still now. People have been through a lot of these boxes, but I bet we're going to find something in here. Apparently they got all the toilet paper during the toilet paper crisis of 2020. And here we are in the land of figurines and glass and many, many, many things. And this is the last day. So they said make piles and don't worry about prices, which I'll do if I find anything I'm looking for. Older QP with some wings there. That's kind of cute. They sold the grandfather clock. I'd be curious to know what offer they got on that. Cool paperweight in there. I'll have to take a look at that. This mirror could not be more 1980s with the floral etch and this sort of amber tone to the glass. It's not just silver, so it's something that is a style that's coming on, and it's priced at $10. Yes, this was sold new by J.C. Penney in 1984. It's called Lotus Windsor Art Products. This is actually signed by Gloria Erickson, who did this design. You know, I think it's likable enough for the price. I'm going to give it a shot. Big box of crescent razor blades. That's something I haven't seen because it's so huge. So let's see if there's any left. 
They're in there, and I'll sell them to you for $2. Wow, they're cool. I'll take them. Yep. Then there's lots of linens. I'm sure some of these are very nice. It looks like pillowcase sets. I mean, this stuff looks like it was ironed and left alone for years and years. Christmas. Ooh, bluebirds. Bluebirds usually do well. have to check these over for stains and spots and overall cleanliness, but there's some cute things in here. This is actually a promotion to try to get you to participate with Life Magazine. Always a great medium for advertising life is especially right at a time like this when the tempo of the whole country quickens. So this apparently is to try to get you to advertise in Life Magazine. <clears throat> Did you hear about the giant hole that opened up under Maryland and Delaware? Apparently they disappeared. Unfortunate, otherwise I'd buy this puzzle for two fifty. This is a nice table linen with a lot of open work and flowers, and it was probably for a card table, but it could be used on a lamp table, so I think we'll take that. This one just has a nice uh, pattern, and it's a runner. This one has the irises. This one has water lilies. This one has a peacock, but it's very dirty. I think it'll clean, but I may skip that even though it's a motif. And then this one has the cocktails. So this is a nice little bar towel, and I think that's cute, and we'll go with barware. So I think I'll pick these little linens up. Okay, let's see what else we've got here. The Bible book. Nice old chest with the metal. This was a Johnny Carson spoof of the happiness books that were done by Charles Schultz with Peanuts. It's called Misery is a Blind Date. Misery is going to a costume ball as a bubble dancer and finding out your date is going as a porcupine. Misery is going to a topless bar the same day you had your eyes dilated. Oh yeah, I gotta get this. The funny thing is every other book in here is religious. <laughs> okay, let's see in here. We have clocks. Nice looking deco mantle clock is going to be $25 today, $22.50 on this one. These prices are great. They're not a very easy style to sell anymore though. So as well priced as they are, I just don't know that it's something that I need to be buying. $15 for all. This is one of these Sirocco wood shelves with the sconces. That's tempting. I like the old wicker hamper. And I'm going to come out here where there is a whole lot more. I think I was right. This person was definitely obsessed with little figurines. Unfortunately, they were obsessed with things like precious moments that we really don't have a lot of call for now. I see a bunch of pictures in frames, including some older frames. We're going to take a look at those. But first, let me take a look at these tables just to see if anything has slipped through. Got another table full. Dago of Santa, but he's a little worn. The little shaker and copper might be okay. It's got the measures on the side. A boxer named Pal, that could be cute. Lots of plates and lots of figurines. Shell Pink Wedding Box by Westmoreland, not a bad piece. I like this old picket fence bowl, and then this is something different. There's the Marcrest in the Daisy and Dot pattern. All right, we're going to take a look at what's in these boxes. Ooh, a bunch of tapes. And records, okay. Here we get some milk glass, some decent pieces. A lot of Fenton hobnails in Westmoreland. Cute little relish rose is it from Germany.
this set are more Sears and Roebuck from the 70s with the nostalgia appeal there. Poodles, Occupied Japan. So there's some stuff here. Whether it's the stuff I need, well, that remains to be seen. I just got this set myself. Needs a good cleaning, but there's a Fenton basket in the blue. Altwasser, European. I like this guy. The American bisque lamb. It seems to be in fairly good shape. One little chip there. And a little crazy. Not bad all in all. This is the old Glamour Girl head base based on Lana Turner. Actually, it's a knockoff of her, but it's an original era one. These little critters that live in their little places are all by Franklin Mint. And boy, there are boxes of it underneath too. And another room. There's a match. Those are a little cuter though. Little penny dolls. And of course we're coming on to Christmas, so Spode Christmas Tree is definitely vintage collectible. Or, well, some of it's vintage, some of it is not. These pieces are made in China as go-alongs, these Christmas tree villages, so I don't really pick those up. They're not the same quality. There is the horse-drawn sleigh and creamer and the engine mug, but again, all of this is offshore, and I just don't find that personally interesting in the same way as other spodes, so I'm going to pass. Trendsetter by Sigma out of the 80s, like a Poirot. I need to learn a little more about plush. I know some valuable pieces are lurking in places, and I need to learn more about what those are. I know these dolls are not valuable, though. These are all the ones that were made, again, to be instantly collectible. And I think this person bought a lot of that sort of thing, unfortunately. But there's some nice glass here. I like the glittery decorations on the picture of Jesus walking on the water. This is an old chromolith print, also religious. A little tip, he said, well, there's so much in here, why don't you come back in and then shop in the opposite direction? After you pay for your first pile, you'll probably see different things, and I think that's very wise. So I'm going to go do that, but in the meantime, if you're looking for quick tips and little short videos, I have a new channel, the Antique Nomad Shorts, and if you check that out, well, that's a lot of 15 second to 30 second to one minute content where if you're sitting somewhere and you're bored and you just want to see a few fun things or get a tip or two, it's a great way to do it in a real hurry. Well, this place is so full I'm making one more pass and I didn't even notice this great cocktail set. It was $20. I assume it's $10 now. I'll take it for that price. Shawnee Puss in Boots and the Elephant and the Thumper for Disney. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I see a few things here for me, I think. Well, the fellow gave me a really nice deal, $25 for everything I bought. It's, it's a steal, honestly. Well, I am at probably my last estate sale for the day because I've got to make some mileage. I'm headed west. So let me show you in this place. It says it is an absolute estate sale. And I believe it. In fact, they are having two different sales here. This is the first of two. 
So they're clearing out what they have left today, apparently. Look at this neat house. I like the angle to the end of it. Very 50s. This little tomato pot is cute with the bird. These are the things I keep saying you should get if you don't have one. These were the annual price guides for years. They're like the Bible in terms of the fact that they cover all sorts of things. I contributed to the one on top and the treasure craft category, but these cover so many different areas of antiques. It's a very good way to get a general knowledge of a lot of things or have access in an easy to reach format. I know the internet, but you know, you have to know what you're looking for. And this is a great way to organize. It's full of potpourri, so no one's noticing it, but this is a 1930s open lace vase. Unfortunately, it's got a chip, or else I'd have taken it for two bucks. At these prices, some of these desert rose pieces are worth picking up. I just do not have room in the car. 60% off means the big water pitcher is $12. These Franciscan Dimitas, the Coronado pattern, these used to sell. For 20 and 25 dollars a piece they're being offered at under five dollars now probably should get those too i used to see this piece all the time the abingdon crescent is a hanging planter and that's why this one's a little cooked and has some damage but if you can find these with the original chain they're pretty neat This is some obscure Midwestern pottery that I do not recognize. It's hand thrown though, you can tell. So that starts to make it interesting, especially for only, what is it now? Six bucks. Here's something that might be cool. This could be Iyitala. Oh, it's Orifors, but you know, that's a good look. It sounds great for that price. Only two dollars and eighty cents lots of interesting stuff depending on your taste i got a little hooked piece already this one's nice too an interesting sofa old rug more frames there's some upholstery for you actually i like those colors <laughs> these all have the same transfer and were probably done by the same decorator and these, see the RS Sewell? Study that mark carefully. That is a fake RS Prussia mark. That is what killed the market for RS Prussia. And it's unfortunate because that mark is not actually like an RS Prussia mark would be. There's another one. And another one. And these are actually made in Japan. So they are 1980s Japanese reproductions. Nice little cutout shelf with the leaves only $4 today, but it's a little broken on the ends. Old Tripoli game. Well, I see that we have some jazz. So that means these might be worth taking just a moment to... There's a stance for you. Doris Day. No Count Sarah. I think that is Sarah Vaughn. Uh, Sounds of the Great Bands. Well, definitely on a lot of popular things, but nothing really worth a bunch of money. On the other hand, these little pieces are Royal Winton. They're the original issue chintz from the 1950s. This is going to be $4.80. There's this. These are really great prices. There's even a Blendo pitcher for, uh, what is it now, six bucks? Sewing hand. I've actually had some success selling these in the past. Okay, let's see what's in here. 
this was the sewing room. I imagine they did well with sewing because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot left here. Robin Products Company fasteners. Old tape measures do all right, and I have a feeling this won't cost much. This is a silhouette for $10 that is frameless. It says 1941 in the corner. I do believe that age and that attribution. I suspect that people have rejected it because it doesn't have a frame, but it does seem like it was made that way. It's just it's a little loose in the non-frame, so that may be why it's still here. A lazy Susan, but it needs its center. Oh, this guy got broken. That's too bad. The Mayfair pattern relish for only $3 would be good, but it's got a chip. This looks like maybe Noritake's Azalea pattern, which is pretty collectible. It is marked Nippon, but I think it's a knockoff from the era. More Blue Willow. They said there's going to be another sale here in a couple of weeks, so these rooms that say do not enter must be really full because they said there's going to be even more then. So those of you in the Kansas City area will have to look for that. Well, Louisville and Nashville is pretty big in Kentucky. I think I better get those. And these little molds on the wall are pretty cute. And these are truly antique, and they are very sweet, and only $8 each now. Empire China. Again, these wires are very bad for these. They should not be hung like this. It puts too much pressure and tension on the back. Well, that was fun. I just ran into a viewer who found some good stuff to sell on Poshmark, and she does a lot of clothes picking, and she found some stuff that was new with the tags on it. The prices are pretty good here. It's 60% off, and apparently they wait till later in the day to get to that point. That's why it's mobbed right now, so I'm trying not to show anybody's face and be respectful, but there's a lot of cool stuff to show you. This is an old spongeware piece, and it's neat to see through old spongeware. This is going to date sometime around 1900. It has a huge crack, obviously, so that's unfortunate, but you know, it is the time of year when platters sell. This big blue willow turkey platter is probably from the 1890s or 1900. It has a chip, unfortunately. Oh yes, I would say 1890s because he had no mark. This is the same place as the Russell Wright because it was made by the same company, Steubenville, that did one of his lines, but this is their own design. This is true antique from France. I have to say, Kansas City is a good place to shop. I'm surprised to see so many interesting things still left at this point in a sale. That's a studio I'm not familiar with. Interesting work. Now, I already have piled up a lot of the really good stuff, so if you're saying, well, I don't see what's so phenomenal about what you're showing us, well, just the volume. And there are a lot of collectible things and good decorative things. These car figures are probably Henri. Oh wait, they're marked on the back. No, oh, the Germany. Well, you know, for the price these might be a buy. I'm going to take a closer look for quality. Well, that was fun. I met a nice viewer and she got some good deals. I got a bunch of good deals. I mean, this place was great. I am very excited. I will show you what I got pretty soon here.
Well, since I have to repack the car this morning after my shopping spree yesterday, I thought I would just take everything into the hotel room and reorganize it. So let's do a quick haul. So I did find a lot of fun things. And I think for me, in some ways, the thing that was the most fun about them was I paid $145 for everything you're seeing. And when I priced it out, it should sell for $650 to $700. This is 1980s, the Poirot mime figure on the vase. It's by a company called Sigma, the taste setter. I'm just starting to buy this sort of stuff from the 80s. It was very popular then. You can say I, I paid $3.50. Actually, for everything that you are seeing, I paid $3.50 each. Some things I'll double my money on. Some things I'll make an incredible profit on. I'll tell you which is which. This pin here is Zell, late 40s, early 50s from New York in the original box. The big wheat staff with the amber... That should easily sell for $25 to $30. One thing to know about these is on the back, they have a mark that says that it is 1 12th GF. GF means gold filled. It does not mean gold. It's not a gold plating you can get off that has value. It's just gold toning. So that does not mean solid gold. These are original chintz pieces by Royal Witten, not the 1990s. I got a few linens, just things I thought were nice. The irises, the water lilies here, just a basic floral there. And then this one I like because it has a little cocktail glass on it that closely matches this set that I got. Again, this set, $3.50. It really pays to go on half-off day to estate sales. The three I went to all had tons of little stuff, so they all had things left that were worth buying. And at prices between 50 and 75% off, you couldn't really go wrong. So the cocktail set cost $3.50, and it should sell for somewhere in the 30 to 35 range. The bell in the middle there is Bohemian. It even has the label to tell us right there. The gold's all good. That should be worth about 15. And it's all sitting on a very nice shaped mirror from the 1930s, which I would have paid the original price of 32, thinking I might get 65 out of it. But for $3.50, I definitely was willing to buy it. Same with this mirror. Hello, everybody. This is the Lotus mirror, sold at JC Penney's in the 1980s, but it is signed. And people are starting to go for these signed and etched mirrors as wall decor. It was the same era as all the Jurem hanging metal pieces, so we are getting people interested in this kind of wall decor as well. Little shaker sets, two little German half dolls that had never been made into anything and were very inexpensive. There's the Germany mark on the back of her. This is a neat piece. It's Hager, but it's supposed to look like bronze. They also did this in a very brilliant blue color. It's an interesting shape for a ewer, I think. It has that formality because it's trying to look like a bronzed piece where it could go in a very classical display or it could go somewhere very modern depending on how you dress it up. So I thought because it was versatile, it was certainly worth the low price and should sell for about $30. The little tiki mug is Japanese from the 70s. This is a very cute Johnny Carson book. This is the best buy of the day, however. She is worth $125 to $150, so of course I was thrilled to get her for $3.50. She is marked under here somewhere. I will find to show you. She's marked Marwall. Marwall was the chalkware company that made these particular heads. The woman with the hibiscus is the one that people really want, and yes, she is selling for $125 to $150 on average. So I was thrilled to see her. I guess she just didn't belong in Kansas City, and no one there knew what to do with her, but I know where to take her. Another nice linen with the cutwork. And then here's my kitchen fun stuff that came from yesterday. Drive carefully is just something you would have stuck on your car, probably provided by AAA in the 1960s or 70s. It's got its original backing. I do have the other piece of the perpetual calendar, but it fell out somewhere in the car. That's what made me decide I needed to bring the rest in and get it organized. 
just a decent little tape measure in metal. Again, it was very inexpensive. The True View viewer is similar to a Viewmaster, but it used little strips of film like this. And you used it in this kind of a viewer. It's got its original box. These don't sell for a ton, but with three little film reels of Grand Canyon and Carlsbad Cavern, well, I think we're probably looking about 15 for that set. This little nightlight is original Cabbage Patch back when it was still marked somewhere. There we go under there with the Appalachian name on it. So that's before Coleco got hold of it. That's about a 15 to $20 piece. The little wind-up Walker Snoopy works. He should double his money. This is Wachter's Bach. It was made 20 years ago. It may still be in production, but I took a chance on this piece because it said on the back it was originally $40. So for that price, I didn't see a problem. And it turns out I can probably get 20 for it. This is Thumper, Walt Disney's Thumper, and it says so on the bottom, which helps. He should be worth about $40. Disabled license plates are a little harder to find, and there is a match set here. They should be worth about $15 for the set. These little Shawnee Puss in Boots and the Elephant have an interesting story in that they are not gold trimmed because they were not factory seconds. Shawnee would send its factory seconds to another decorator who would then trim them. It just says patented USA, so a lot of people are not aware that these are Shawnee pieces unless you see the one that says patented Puss in Boots and recognize the mark. Now, because they don't have the gold trim, even though those were factory seconds, it's what the collectors like the most, so you can't say they're the very best examples. And this, as cute as they are, these are things that you do see, and I expect there'll be others at my show. So it won't be the only one, so that means I need it to be the cheapest one. While paying $3.50 each, I could sell these for $15, which is 25% below retail price. Still make a bunch of money and make someone happy, so that's what I plan to do. This little box with all the razor blades and the razor, that was a great cheap price. Pretty good graphics. And I figure from the 50s, that should definitely be worth well more than I paid. And this little bear is a Fenton January bear. He's just a little clear panda, but again, at that price, how could I go wrong? So I recommend going to Half Price Day at estate sales. You can get some really good bargains and you get a big selection. You'll get thrift store prices and frankly, you get to see everything in the house and not just the stuff the thrift store let get to the floor. I am George the Antique Nomad. Thank you so much for joining me. Check out the social media links in the description below and we will see you soon from somewhere else along this journey. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now!